everyone hope you all are doing good in this video on cyber crime we will be explaining you about what is cyber crime types of cyber crimes and how to prevent them this session is conducted by an expert having more than 15 plus years of industry experience so before we move on with our live session please subscribe to our channel and also if you want upcoming updates please hit the bell icon and also leave a like if you enjoy our content Before starting off with the session let's look at the agenda for today initially we will be discussing what is cyber crime what are cyber crime categories then the different types of cyber crime we'll also discuss preventing cyber crime tips to prevent cyber crime cyber security and the role of cyber crime in cyber security so let's quickly hop into our first sub topic that is what is cyber crime Let us first start defining what exactly is cyber crime. Cyber crime is defined as a criminal act committed with the assistance of a computer or other electronic devices connected to the internet. Cyber crime can be committed by individuals or small groups of people with little technical knowledge as well as highly organized global criminal groups with relatively talented developers and specialists. Any criminal activity carried out over the internet is referred to as cyber crime. With 4.5 million attacks in July 2020, India was the country with the highest number of attacks, making it vital to raise the awareness is about cyber crime now the question arises why cyber crimes are carried out right so the majority of cyber crime is committed by cyber criminals or hackers looking to make money cyber crime affects both individuals and organizations aside from that cyber criminals may use computer or networks to send viruses malware and other malicious softwares cyber criminals use a variety of profit driven criminal acts to make money such as stealing and reselling identities gaining access to financial accounts and fraudulently using credit cards to obtain funds basic cyber crime examples are stolen credit card information the most common type of cyber crime occurs when a person's credit card information is stolen and illegally used to acquire or purchase goods or services via the internet another example is hacking into a government website tampering with delicate government statistics is another type of cyber attack or cyber crime now that we know what is cyber crime let's look into cyber crime categories cyber crime has been broadly classified into three categories the types of methods used and difficulty level levels vary depending on the category So the first category uh, is individual individual cyber crime category cyber crime involves a single person disseminating malicious or illegal material through the internet human trafficking and online stalking are the examples of individual cyber crime category the next cyber crime category we will talk about is property property cyber crime category this is similar to a real life insurance of a criminal illegally processing an individual's bank or credit card information criminals use people's bank details to gain access to their funds conduct online transactions or carry out phishing schemes to persuade people to give up their personal information they could also use a malicious software to gain access to a web page with confidential information so this is all about property cyber crime category the next type of uh, cyber crime is government while this type of cyber crime is uncommon it is still considered a serious offense it entails breaking into government databases and hacking official websites terrorists are the hackers who break into government websites and a crime against the government is also known as cyber terrorism these criminals are usually terrorists or enemy governments of other nations that's all about cyber crime category the next topic on our on our list is cyber crime types so what are different types of cyber crime these are different types of cyber crime a uh, malware phishing dos attack man in the middle attack and drive by downloads attack let's discuss each types in detail first one is malware right malware is a broad term broad phase that encompasses a wide range of cyber attacks such as trojans viruses and worms malware is simply described as code written to steal data or to destroy things on a computer 
malware is basically any piece of software that is designed with the intent to damage disrupt or gain unauthorized access to our device and even inflict harm to data in multiple ways how malware causes harm can help us classify the types of viruses we are dealing with so let's uh, look into types of malware we have first is viruses worms and trojans first type of malware is viruses viruses like their biological namesakes attach to and infect clean files and they can even spread uncontrollably causing damage to the core functionality as well as deleting and corrupting files they typically manifest as executable files downloaded from the internet by the active user virus need an already infected at active operating system or program to attack the computer usually spread via infected websites file sharing or email attachment downloads the next type of malware attack is worms worms uses the network interface to infect an entire network or devices either locally or remotely or via the internet with each infected machine it infects more machines worms are spread via soft vulnerabilities too trojans malware that masquerades legitimate software that can be hacked it prefers to operate invisibly and create security backdoors through which other viruses can enter the system because it looks trustworthy users download it trojan themselves are a doorway unlike a worm they need to host the work the next type of cyber attack is phishing phishing frequently disguises itself as a request for information from a trustworthy third party consumers are sent phishing emails in which they are invited to click on a link and enter their personal information phishing emails have become more complex in recent years making it difficult for some people to distinguish between a legitimate request for information and a fraudulent one although phishing emails are sometimes confused with spam they, they spam messages they are far more dangerous than the than a simple advertisement this type of attack involves hackers sending malicious emails at attachment or urls to users to gain access to their accounts or computer cyber criminals are becoming more established and many of these emails are not flagged as spam users are tricked into emails or not flagged as spam phishing consists of five steps uh, first one is preparation then the setup carry out recording the data and identity theft so the first step in phishing is preparation or planning step the phisher must decide which businesses to target and how to obtain email addresses from those businesses customers the second step after a planning is set up after deciding which form to imitate and who their victims will be they will begin the setup process phishers create communications to distribute them and collect data the third phase of phishing is carry out carry out the attack most people are familiar with this step the phisher sends a bogus message that appears to be from a reputable source the fourth step is recording data or data collection the phisher keeps track of the information that victims enter into websites or pop up windows the last step is identity theft and fraud phishers use the information they collect to take make fraudulent transactions and up to a quarter of victims never fully recover from phishing attack the next type of cyber crime attack we'll discuss is dos attack which is denial of service dos attacks can be carried out in a variety of method but the most common is a distributed denial of service attack in computing a denial of service attack is a cyber attack in which the operator seeks to make a machine or network resources unavailable to its intended users by temporarily or indefinitely disrupting services of a host connected to the internet a dos attack as the name implies aims to disrupt network securities or services attackers send a large amount of data or traffic through the network until it becomes overloaded and fails 
DOS attack can be carried out in several ways, the most common of which is distributed denial of service attack. The attacker sends traffic or data that overloads the system by utilizing multiple machines. In many cases, a person may be unaware that his or her computer has been hijacked and is aiding the DOS attack. Disrupting services can have major ramifications for security and internet access. Many large-scale DOS attacks have occurred in the past. A DDoS attack involves multiple connected online devices, collectively known as botnet, which are used to overwhelm a target website with fake traffic. So this is all about DOS attack. The next attack we'll discuss is man-in-the-middle attack. The man in the middle attack can obtain information from the end user and the entity with which he or she is communicating by impersonating the endpoint in online information exchange. A man in the middle attack is a type of eavesdropping attack where attackers interrupt an existing conversation of data transfer, often inserting themselves in the middle of the transfer. The attacker pretend to be both legitimate participants. Let's look at an example to learn more about the attack. This is how the man in the middle attack works. First, the attacker sets up a fake chat service that mimics that of a well-known bank. Using the knowledge gained from the first step, the attacker pretends to be the bank and starts a chat with the target. Then the attacker starts a chat on the real bank website pretending to be the target or the user and passing all the needed information to gain access to the target's account. The next attack is drive-by downloads attack. We no longer need to accept a download or install a software update to become infected. By simply visiting a hacked website may now result in the installation of a dangerous code on the device. We only need to visit or drive by a website and click. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cybersecurity, then Intellipat has a post-graduation certification in cybersecurity and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts except for any software and the malicious code will be downloaded automatically to your device in the background without your concern. A download from these pages refers to an to the unintentional download of a virus or malicious software onto a computer or mobile device. Drive by downloads typically take advantage of exploit security flaws in an out-of-date browser app or operating system so this is how drive-by download attacks work first step is injection the attacker embeds or injects a malicious element into a compromised web page this could be javascript code an iframe a link or a right redirect a malvertisement or cross-site scripting the user views the page triggering the malicious element. The element exploits a vulnerability in a part of the software stack of the user computer. This could be the browser, browser plugins, the operating system. The third step is download the user. The user downloads the malicious file silently to the user, to the computer. In this example, the payload is a Trojan horse. Attackers may use other payloads also. Uh, such as viruses or worms previously discussed in malware attacks. The fourth step is execution. The Trojan horse executes opening a shell the attacker can use to gain control over the device. Then the next step is remote control. The attacker gains remote control to the personal computer. This enables them to extract passwords or other valuable data from the user's device. The last step is lateral movement. The attacker can now use credentials obtained from the user's device to connect to another more valuable system such as company's website or network and get the again and get the more information from uh, regarding the user. So that now we have discussed uh, cybercrime attacks. Let's now see how we can prevent uh, from cybercrime. Tips to prevent cybercrime. The first one is backup all the data, the system and any considerations. It enables data to be stored earlier to assist the business in recovering from an unplanned event. 
so basically in the event of a disaster one must have all the data backed up to avoid serious downtime loss of data and serious financial loss the second tip is enforce concrete security and keep it up to date choose a firewall with features that protect against malicious hackers malware and viruses this enables us to identify and respond to threats more quickly the endpoints need to be protected with protection system since most of the attacks are uh, done via the endpoints never give out personal information to a stranger uh, the strangers can use the information to commit fraud on others uh, or else the details regarding confidential information about the identity this is the data that identity thieves seek Individuals who have access to your personal data can retrieve your login information from various websites or commit cyber crimes such as tax fraud all while posing as you. Use virtual private networks. VPN enables us to hide our IP addresses and delete our website activities. VPN encrypts internet traffic and disguises the online identity of the person. This make it more difficult for the third party to track the activities of the user online and steal data. Restriction on access to your most valuable data. Uh, make a folder if possible so that no one can see the confidential document. Create strong passwords to access the documents. If hacker gets access also it will be highly impossible them to crack the passwords and get hands on private data. Check the network security to prevent cyber crime. A cyber firewall checks your network settings to see if anyone has logged into your computer. Putting your network behind firewall is one of the most effective ways to defend yourself from a, from any cyber attack. A firewall system will block any brute force attacks and uh, and made on your network or system before it can do any damage. Also when visiting unauthorized website keep your information secure. Using public websites information can easily bypass the data. The next topic is cyber security and cyber crime. We'll see how uh, cyber security can help us to prevent cyber crime. Cyber security is a domain designed to eliminate cyber crime. Cyber security can also be referred to as IT security. While cyber criminality is a kind of criminal behavior involving unauthorized access to computer systems. Cyber security and cyber crime. Cyber uh, cyber security gives in-depth knowledge about how to control or recover from cyber attack. While cyber crime is a type of criminal conduct that involves gaining unauthorized access to computer systems. Here I'm concluding the topic. India was the country with highest number of attacks with 4.5 million cyber crime attacks in 2020. Cyber crime is unauthorized access to computer systems and criminal behavior. Cyber security provides a thorough understanding of how cyber attack can be controlled or recovered. Online courses provide advice on how cyber crime and cyber hazards can be prevented, protected and recovered. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cyber security, then Intellipat has a post graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts. So guys, we have come to the end of our session. I hope you all enjoyed it. For any questions that you have related to coding, you can mention it in the comment sections below. So thank you so much for attending this session and meet you in another session.